Hey up all, I'm Propagandist, and if you've been uh, following this channel the last couple of weeks, you'll probably be looking at the title of this video and thinking, Red, didn't you upload a video very similar to this recently? At least not too long ago? Simple answer, yes, I did. Just, um, well, I can't remember how many days ago it was now, but there's only a few as of the moment I record this. I uploaded an earlier version of this review, which follows. Uh, unfortunately, however, that video is uh, no longer available on YouTube. It's been blocked on copyright grounds, because a couple of days after it got uploaded, it was, uh, well, my original Anzio review was basically blocked worldwide by Bandai, uh, Bandai Visual, simply because I think because it was incorporating actual footage from the anime I was reviewing, which, um, you know, basically in short, it's copyright reasons really, really why uh, that, that is the case. But um, some of you may be thinking, geez, that sucks, but you know, couldn't you appeal the block somehow? Uh, surely under fair usage guidelines you could perhaps uh, try and negotiate a solution? Well. YouTube does have an option for doing that if you want to dispute the copyright block, but I have decided I'm not confident going down that route because fair usage can be very subjective and it can mean different things in different countries where copyright laws might be slightly different and uh, ultimately, you know, I just don't have the time, the kind of legal knowledge or the inclination to be getting involved in a kind of big, potentially complex negotiation over what I can and can't do. So sadly, you know, I've just um, decided basically to pretty much remove the old version of the Anzio review video that I posted a few days back, and instead I'm just going to upload this, which is going to be, I say a new version, but to be honest, a lot of what I talk about is going to be the same as um, well, the same kind of stuff that I talked about in the original video. So, uh, let's uh, actually get on with it then. So, as the title suggests, here is my new version of my Girls and Panther Corrego Hunter no Anzio Sen Des OVA review, which translates as this is the real Anzio battle once again. I've probably butchered that Japanese pronunciation, for which I again apologise. But um, given the copyright issues that were surrounding the uh, well, the original uh, version of this review video, I've decided that the only way really to carry out reviews like this safely, you know, without any kind of significant risk that I might get into uh, trouble over copyright and that my videos might get blocked, is instead of overlaying my review with actual footage, instead I'm just going to have to you know overlay static imagery from time to time. That way, you know, the uh, content ID system hopefully won't flag it up and that way I can get away with uh, conducting these videos because obviously you know I'm guessing that's what the problem was with the original that the content ID system of course which just automatically checks videos basically it probably just recognized some of the footage because um, from what I understand Bandai Visual is quite strict about copyright and they do um, you know really kind of enforce it so I imagine that you know YouTube's content ID system has you know enough kind of information about their different franchises to be able to identify them from uh, sort of small clips of footage. So sadly that means there will be no actual moving footage uh, from the uh, Anzio OVA in this video, instead it'll just be static imagery as I say. So as I've said this video will pretty much follow the same structure as my first uh, attempt at reviewing the Anzio OVA. So. To reiterate what was uh, actually said there for anyone watching this for the first time, if you've ever watched some of my content over on my strategist channel, which is my main channel where I do a lot of gaming content, you might be aware that I'm a fan of a Japanese anime franchise by the name of Girls on Panzer. So Girls on Panzer started life as a simple 12 episode TV anime, but since then it expanded. So it was first broadcast in 2012, but after that there were a release of six short OVAs, there were various mangas that were released, uh, there was this, the longer length Anzio OVA, which I'm going to be reviewing here. Then in 2015 there was the Girls on Panzer Dare film, the movie, um, and that also had an accompanying uh, OVA called Alice War, and um, I think that's the name of it if I'm not mistaken. And of course uh, at present there's also uh, a newer instalment in the franchise, Girls on Panzer Das Finale, which um, I think is currently as of the moment I record this, the first episode of that has been broadcast over in Japan. Though obviously, you know, given how long it took to license the Anzio OVA and the film for release over here in the West, I imagine that Das Finale, you know, might not be seen on Western screens for quite a while. So, uh, GUP, Girls and Panzer, is a bit of a funny old anime. It's hardly the most kind of groundbreaking in terms of plot, animation style, or the like, yet when it was first broadcast back in 2012, it went really big over in Japan. and. Don't get me wrong, the premise and the storyline are still very much intriguing enough. The characters are all very cute, they're very moe, they're very likeable, and some of them are quite memorable as well for their design. 
Um, and the animation is nice and solid in Girls on Panzer. But outside of Japan, though, GUP is much less kind of well known. Though, admittedly, among the minority of non Japanese anime fans out there who've seen it, it does tend to get looked upon quite fondly. So, it does have a bit of a fan base outside of Japan, just not perhaps a very big one. So, as such, for a long while over here in the UK, it's been practically impossible to be able to get one's hands uh, on the latest Girls on Panzer works, particularly the Anzio OVA and the film, um, unless, of course, you're willing to stream them from websites of kind of dubious legal status. Um, thing is, I personally wouldn't ever knowingly use any streaming service that may um, that may not have the correct legal permissions to be streaming. Um, the thing is, um, you know, it, it's just a kind of matter of principle for me. I, I don't like to use them. I like to try and support the anime industry where I can. So I try to avoid, you know, dubious streaming sites. So for a long while, I've been unable to watch either the OVA or the movie. Uh, the movie, like I said, came out in Japanese cinemas in 2015. The Anzio OVA was released in Japan in 2014. However, in autumn last year, autumn 2017, both the movie and the Anzio OVA were finally, finally released on Blu-ray and DVD over here in the UK, meaning that I've finally been able to get my hands on them and I've finally been able to watch them. And, you know, for a long time now I've been yearning to take a look at them, now I have. And, uh, you know, since I've now got this uh, propagandist channel, um, where I'm going to be doing all kinds of anime related content and non-gaming content. I thought, why not do some, you know, Girls and Panzer content here for YouTube? So, of course, I originally tried with my first attempt <coughs> at reviewing Anzio, uh, but uh, sadly, you know, that got copyright blocked, so here I am again, trying once more. Um, so, of course, like I say, here I am, you know, embarking on my second attempt at uh, recording this review of the Anzio OVA. Now, the fact that I uh, can't feature actual footage does also have implications uh, for any future Girls and Panzer content that I choose to do here on Propagandist. But hopefully, if I use you know static imagery, then I should be able to avoid uh, future video blocks. So yeah, it does mean that all GUP content from now on will probably be using uh, static imagery and no footage. But hopefully, that won't be a big issue for all you guys out there. So now out of the way, let's uh, you know start getting on with things. Let's get into uh, you know the review itself. So for anyone who's uh, never seen Girls and Panzer and thus doesn't know a lot about the anime or what it's about, a brief bit of explanation might be necessary just to fill you in so that you can then understand where the Anzio uh, OVA actually fits into things. So by way of a warning, there are going to be plenty of spoilers ahead uh, in this video, both about the TV series and also about the Anzio OVA. So if you don't want anything spoiled, if you're hoping to actually go out and watch these for yourself, then now's your chance to leave this video. So you've been warned. Also, of course, um, if you're wondering why I'm on the left of the screen, not in the centre, it's because, you know, I want to sort of overlay stuff to the right, so that, you know, I have plenty of space, so just, you know, getting that out of the way. So, in 2012, as I've said, the, uh, the uh, Girls and Panzer anime first appeared on Japanese TV screens, and it did remarkably well. The show takes place in a world that, on a superficial level at least, seems realistically very similar to our own, re our own uh, real life world, except there are two big major twists. Uh, that are revealed in the first episode of the series, which differentiate the Girls of Panzer world from our own. So, number one, in this world, high schools are situated aboard these gargantuan carrier ships, each one which is practically the size of a small city. And number two, high school girls and young women in this world often participate in this rather unique form of martial art, which is referred to, I think, as Sensha Do, if I've uh, pronounced that correctly which is basically the operation of tanks and armoured vehicles dating from before mid-1945. So the main characters of Girls on Panzer are the five members of Anglefish team, who were students at ORI Girls Academy. Just um, in case anyone's wondering, uh, by the way, I keep glancing to the left just because I'm uh, looking at a Word document which has all my notes, just so that I don't forget anything, because it's quite a bit of stuff that I want to talk about. So the main characters of GUP are the five members of Anglefish team, who were students at ORI Girls Academy. Oori, fun little fact here incidentally, is actually a real place in Japan. It's a kind of seaside resort town in Ibaraki Prefecture, which is on Japan's uh, east coast. Um, so in the storyline of the TV series, Oori Girls Academy has recently restored its previously disbanded Senshido elective, and is putting together a force with which to participate in a national high school Senshido tournament. So Anglerfish team are the principal team of the Oori Senshido force. Um, there's Miho, the team captain and Ori's overall commander. You have the gunner, Hana Isuzu, the loader, Yukari, who is quite a memorable character, not least because she's a bit of a tank nerd. Uh, you have 
uh, the radio operator Saori, and of course the driver Marco. So, over the course of the anime, Orai faces a variety of opponents, all of whom are typically themed after different World War II belligerent states. So you have a British-themed school called St. Gloriana, the US-themed school Saunders, uh, a Soviet-themed school called Pravda, and, a fi and finally a German-themed school called Kuro Morimine. But one opponent that Orai did face in the TV series, who were mentioned and seen very briefly at the end of episode 7 of the anime, is a school called Anzio High. Now, this high school and its, you know, uh, uh, no Force are themed after Mussolini's Italy. Now, the TV series doesn't actually show the battle between Ori and Anzio, and if anything, it actually more kind of focuses on Anglerfish team and their uh, characterization. Naturally, therefore, among some fans of the franchise, there was a sense of disappointment that we didn't get to see some Italian tanks actually in action. But that was rectified in 2014 with the release of the Anzio OVA, which basically depicts a series of events that were not actually shown in the TV anime, namely the battle between Anzio and Oran. So the OVA kicks off with uh, Anzio itself, introducing us to Anzio's Senshido team and their rather memorable commander, Anshavi. Uh, incidentally, all of Anzio's named team members are typically named after food, because everyone knows, you know, that the Italians are all about the fine cuisine, are they not? I mean, this is actually a, uh, you know, bit of a recurrent trope in Girls and Panzer. A lot of the, uh, you know, foreign-themed Sejudo teams, their members are typically named after certain culinary uh, delicacies. So, of course, on Anzio, you have Anchovy, the overall team commander. You also have two other team members known as Pepperoni and Carpaccio, <laughs> interestingly. <laughs> so, much like the commanders of all the other opponents that Ori faces in the TV series, as I say, Anchovy is instantly something of a memorable character, not least because of the uh, nickname she's given, but also because her Senshido crewmates refer to her with undoubtedly a dash of historical humour as the Duce. So, the scene shows uh, Anzio beginning to formulate their plan for the upcoming match with Ori, and it's revealed early on that they have a secret weapon up their sleeve which they're kind of counting on to deliver victory against Ori. So this opening scene pretty much tells you everything you need to know about Anzio as a school and as a Senshido force. In something of a kind of humorous jab at the uh, Italian people and their stereotypes, the students of Anzio are typically more kind of excitable and easily distracted, in contrast to other teams in the series who've been more sort of disciplined. And this is something that I've always kind of enjoyed about Girls and Panzer. It can be serious when it needs to be, but, you know, especially during the actual battle sequences, it can be very, very serious, very tense, but it still has its light-hearted and kind of feel-good moments. And the thing is, the Anzio OVA very much continues within that vein. So in spirit, it's very much in keeping with the rest of the TV series. So after being introduced to Anzio, we are then, you know, we're then taken back to Ori straight away and to our familiar cast of characters. So Yukari, our favourite uh, Panzer Otaku, returns from a reconnaissance mission at Anzio, which is something basically of a nod to the TV series, because if you watch the TV series, you'll know that in episode, I think it's um, episode 5, that's the one, I think, uh, episode 5 or 6, one or the other, I think, I'm pretty sure it's episode 5, um, where basically she uh, did something very similar against the Saunders adversary. Um, and therefore, that you know, that scene where she returns from uh, reconnaissance to Antio was probably meant to be a bit of kind of fan service for all the regular fans of the series. So it's revealed that she's found information uh, about Anzio and also about their secret weapon. But the problem is she doesn't really know much about it. Um, so Miho and her friends are going to have to look elsewhere for the information about this weapon that Anzio is going to be fielding. Now, this is where one of my favourite Ori teams, and undoubtedly the favourite of uh, many other Girls and Panzer fans as well, uh, gets some nice air time, or some nice screen time rather. And I'm talking here about the Hippo team, who are basically the four history buff girls who crew Ori's uh, Sturmbischutz 3 assault gun. So Miho visits them specifically to talk to their team commander, Caesar, or Kaiser if you want to pronounce it in a more historically accurate Roman way. So anime lovers who are familiar with Girls and Panzer will probably of course know that Caesar is a big fan of Roman history, hence her soul name, and it isn't much of a surprise therefore that she can read Italian. And it's also revealed that Caesar has a friend at Anzio. That scene also has a rather amusing line which uh, you know, in my original uh, Anzio OVA <laughs> review, I incorporated this little clip of footage. Sadly, of course, I can't incorporate it now because, you know, copyright rooms. 
So we learned that um, Anzio's secret weapon is basically an Italian Caro Armato P40 heavy tank. So just uh, very quickly here, a funny little um, historical digression. The P40 is referred to as a heavy tank, uh, you know, in many sources, but that's according to Italian standards of the day. Really though, if you compare it to other tanks, it's probably kind of more comparable to the medium tanks fielded by, uh, you know, other World War II belligerents uh, like Britain, Germany or the USSR. So, as I say, it's referred to as a heavy, but it's probably more actually kind of a medium by the standards of other belligerent states in World War II. But getting back to the matter at hand, the main element of the OVA, the battle itself, is probably what anyone watching Mills and Panzer is really wanting to see. And having watched it myself, I can uh, you know, quite confidently say that the OVA does do a very good job of recapturing the, the uh, kind of action, the excitement and the tension that is typical of the battle scenes from the TV series. Thing is, it was always going to be a bit of a challenge for Actus, the studio that produced uh, Girls and Panzer, to actually create a thrilling battle for the OVA. Because the thing is, if you've watched the TV series, you already know that the outcome of the Ori vs Anzio battle is a foregone conclusion. So we know that Ori is going to win this if we've uh, you know, already watched the TV series. We saw that very much in episode 7. So of course, what this means is that for Actus, the pressure was really on to actually create something that was tense and exciting to watch, in spite of the fact that we, the viewers, already, you know, probably already know how it's going to turn out. But Actus certainly stepped up to the challenge, and they certainly delivered, in my opinion. What made the Anzio uh, battle particularly interesting, though, was that it was quite different to the battles that Ori uh, has fought throughout the TV series. You see, against other opponents like St. Gloriana, Saunders, Pravda, Kura Morimine, Ori has always been the underdog team. Um, they've, they've always been inferior both in numerical and firepower terms. Thus, during those particular matches, Miho, as a commander, always had to be resourceful, she always had to be creative, she always had to mitigate Ori's relative weaknesses by utilising superior, usually typically asymmetric tactics such as stealthiness against St. Gloriana, deception against Saunders, surprise against Pravda and confusion and chaos against Kuro Morimine. But from the beginning it becomes clear that Anzio is not like the other opponents that Miho faces in the TV series. Anzio and, o and Ori are actually much more evenly matched Ori might have fewer tanks, but a large percentage of Anzio's uh, Sanjido force is actually made up of CV-33 tankettes, or L-335s, whatever you want to call them. So anyone who knows anything about CV-33s knows that these are not, you know, proper tanks. These are what you call tankettes. They're so small, and they're only armed with machine guns. They're not anti-tank weapons, and as such, the only real uses that Ori, uh, not Ori, sorry, Anzio actually has uh, for these weapons are for purposes such as scouting or for distraction, as decoys perhaps. So, what made the Anzio battle interesting to watch, in my opinion, was to see Miho up against an adversary who, instead of simply trying to overwhelm her with firepower, instead kind of treats her to a dose of her own medicine, to kind of put it that way. So, knowing that her force can't really engage in a conventional head-on attack without significant risk, uh, to their flag tank, Anjavi instead goes for subterfuge, deception and chaos. Of course, the only issues with uh, Anjavi's plan are that Miho has been taking time to train and discipline her crewmates, whilst her own tank crews, you know, in, uh, whilst Anjavi's own tank crews, that is, in keeping with that old Italian stereotype, are not quite as organised, not quite as efficient. So naturally, Miho's ability to uh, adapt quickly and stay calm helps to actually win the day. And of course, in, tree, uh, in true Girls and Panzer fashion, it all ends with camaraderie, it all ends with good sportsmanship, establishing a good relationship between Miho and Anchovy, which, again, is always very much in keeping with the franchise's feel-good factor. So, with all that out of the way, let me kind of summarise my overall feelings towards the Girls and Panzer Anzio OVA. It was good to be able to come back to a favourite franchise of mine to watch, an instalment which until recently I have been simply unable to take a look at. And overall, actors have done a very good job in my opinion. The OVA is very much in the spirit of the TV series. The characters are as adorable as ever, and the main event, the battle itself, manages to be tense and uh, exciting, uh, even though we, the audience, technically already know how it's going to turn out. The aesthetic, of course, is typically gorgeous and pleasing to the eye, as always, and the sound design is also solid, as always, with plenty of booming tank fire to keep your heart thudding. 
So overall, if you asked me, Red, do you uh, recommend the Anzio OVA? Do you recommend that I watch it? Well, without a shadow of a doubt, definitely. I would definitely recommend it. In fact, I would recommend checking out Girls and Panzer as a franchise overall if you haven't done so already. You never know. You might find something in it that you, uh, you know, enjoy. So that concludes my second review attempt at the uh, Girls and Panzer Anzio OVA. Like I said earlier, I've managed to get my hands on uh, the 2015 Girls and Panzer Der film as well, which I definitely um, am going to be reviewing here on Propagandist at some point in the near future. Now, uh, my DVD copy doesn't come with the Alice War OVA, so sadly I won't be reviewing that anytime soon. I don't know if that's uh, going to be licensed anytime soon either for release over here in the West, so that might not be around for a while. Uh, also, of course, you know, given the copyright issues that uh, I said I was having earlier with the Anzio, uh, my original Anzio OVA review, of course, my uh, Dare Film review will, of course, just contain static imagery, no actual footage, just, you know, to try and protect myself from copyright claims. But apart from that, of course, there will also be other Girls and Panzer related content that I decide to do here on Propagandist. I have some ideas in mind. Of course, there's the whole uh, Girls and Panzer Das Finale. Um, or the final chapter, whatever you want to call it, which um, has actually already begun broadcasting in Japan, and which, you know, there's inf more and more uh, information about it coming out. So, uh, of course, I'll definitely be uh, taking a look at that at some point in the near future. And, of course, I uh, also have a few ideas of my own for various content I can do. Uh, apparently, there's a PS4 Girls on Panzer game, which um, I, I don't know if it's been released or if it's... Um, uh, getting close to release by now, but there's certainly a lot of information coming out about that, so I may uh, take a look at that as well. And I also have uh, other ideas for things to do uh, based on, you know, my own kind of talk topics related to Girls on Panzer. So, you'll be seeing more and more GUP content coming out on this channel in the near future. Like I say, it's an old favourite of mine, so uh, why not? But uh, other than that, it's uh, time for me to start wrapping up this video, so thank you for watching this, my second Anzio review attempt. Hopefully this one won't get copyright blocked. <laughs> so I uh, hope you all understand my reasons for, you know, basically redoing this, for taking down the original video and uploading this one instead. So feel free to leave thoughts of your own in the comments. You know, did you uh, watch the Girls and Panzer Anzio OVA? Did you enjoy it? Um, obviously I'll start wrapping up here. So as I said earlier, you know, I am, uh, of course, propagandist, but I also have another channel, my main channel, General Red Strategist, where I do gaming content. So if you're ever interested in that kind of thing, feel free to uh, go and check that out. There will be a link to it in the video description, as well as on the propagandist channel page, so you can, uh, you know, navigate to it uh, via those uh, directions. There are also a couple of social media links associated with that channel, a Facebook page and a Twitter page. So if you want to check those out as well, you can do. It's uh, up to you. But other than that, Thank you everybody for watching this, hope you enjoyed this, hope you're not too disappointed that my original anti-OVA uh, review video got taken down, but in the meantime this is Propagandist signing off, goodbye all.